Father, you are the maker of all good and all perfect gifts. Father, you are the father of Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob. You are the father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. We come to you this morning, Father God, with a bowed down head and a humble heart. Yes. Saying, Father God, just have mercy on us this morning. Because realize, Father God, that mercy suits all of our tastes. For that, I say thank you, Lord, for being a just God. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for being a loving God. Well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. For being a wise God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son, Jesus. Well. Died on Calvary. Yeah, yeah. On the third day. Yeah. Oh, Father God, he woke up, uh, got up, and say, all power mm. is in my hand. Yeah, yeah. I have power to open doors. I have power to close doors. Well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. For being so good. Yeah. I look around. We all have not been good. Mm. Because the only one that can be called good, Father, yeah. that you had mercy on us. Mm. You gave us new mercy. Yeah. And I say thank you. Thank you. If I had 10,000 tongues, I'd take it back if I had 20,000 tongues. Yeah. I take it back if I had 40,000 tons. Oh, Father God, if I had a million tons, it would be enough. Well, Father God, just to tell you, thank you. Thank you. For ta we'll take it care of me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father God, mm -hmm. for the bed we laid on last night. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. For that angel. Took charge and watched over it all night. Well, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the food we ate this morning, for the water we had to drink. Thank you, Lord. Well, now, Lord, now, Lord, yeah. come by the ark one more time. Go up and down the aisles. Search every pew, Father God. Well, all things that your spirit won't dwell in. Father God, we ask you to remove it. Remove it, Father God. So when we stand our trial, oh, Father God, we want our spot of wrinkle. Thank you now, Father God. I ask you right now, Father, to remove all sin, remove all hatred, remove, Father God, anything, Father God. That will hinder us from ending your kingdom. Well, and now, Lord, now, now Lord, yeah. remember the one who's going to break the bread of life. Remember, Pastor Howard, Father God. Continue, Father God, yeah. to strengthen him way weak. Continue, Father God, to build him up where he's torn down. Yeah. Continue, Father God, to crown his head with more knowledge and understanding. Well. Where he can preach your word this morning. Thank you, Lord, Thank you. for the Noah Sark Missionary Baptist Church. Mm. Oh, Father God, all his visitors. Thank you for all our members. Thank you for all our friends, Father God. And we pray right now, Father. Well. Right now, Father. Mm. Let your spirit dwell within our hearts. Yeah, yeah. Let us, Father God. Let us, Father God. Yeah. Just do justice. Let us. Love, mercy, let us, Father God, walk humbly with you. I ask all this, Father, in the mighty, the magnificent, and the marvelous name of Jesus. Let the church say amen. 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 amen.
Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Everybody join and help us say that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, say, Lord, I love Lord, you. I love you. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Lord, yes, I do. I love you. Say, I love you, Lord. Lord, I love you. Yes, I do. I love you, Lord. Yes, I do. I love you because you are worthy. You are.
am CJ Walker. Her real name is Brie Love. Born formerly enslaved, sharecroppers was orphaned just at seven years old. After suffering hair loss from a scalp condition, Walker invented a nerving, nerving line of African American hair products in 1905 that led her distinction as one of America's first self-made millionaires. Her highly successful cosmetics company today in business. Garrett Morgan was also a great inventor whose invention had a major impact on the world. He had two major inventions in his life, the gas mask and traffic light. Even though he has invented many things, Garrett is known mostly for the traffic light. Take a second and think about what driving would be like without lights to direct traffic at an intersection. There would be a whole lot of accidents every day. Because of this, the impact of his invention felt by everyone in the world daily. You cannot drive anywhere almost without seeing a traffic light at least one time. And on top of that, they have saved so many lives. Many things, many things happen when a black woman is in the kitchen. It would be a lot harder to produce Patty's pies without the contribution of, in, of inventor Judy Wood, who Reed, Reed is docu, documented as the first black woman to help to hold a patent for her dough kneader and roller in 1884. The design is an improvement on a wood on a wood pan roller, helping bakers soften and mix ingredients more quickly. It. Alfred L. Crawley was an African American businessman and an inventor, best known for inventing the ice cream ice cream scoop in in 1897. Crawley's invention was intentionally called an ice cream mold, and this year. It was designed to keep ice cream and other foods from sticking. It was easy to operate with one hand. The ice cream mold and disher was strong, durable, effective, and inexpensive. African American inventors have made all springing contributions to society past and present. We thank these black innovators in history for their ingenu ingenuity and creativity. Where would we be without these inventions today? A real church will be standing up. If you saw that many young people after the pandemic showing up in church. I mean, a real church will be celebrating, amen, to see young people to talk about black history at that young age, amen. We ought to celebrate our young people, amen. As you all know, that is a problem post-pandemic, but when we can see this at Noah's Ark, amen, we ought to just be proud and be celebrate, amen, and thank Ms. Chanel for making it happen and bringing her crew in. And I, I tell you right now, it was going to be a riot. So they were, they were not scheduled to do this in the service this morning. But it was going to be a riot if they didn't get a chance to do it. Cause, cause they, they, came, they came up on me like gangbusters. Like, I, we got to do our part. Mama had pulled off a minute. I, they said, well, I got I to gotta do my speech. <laughs> amen. But, but thank God we can make room, amen, for, for our young people church we don't shine on them they are the church of today amen good morning Noah's Ark good morning Noah's Ark can we say 26 can we say 26 we're saying 26 because our beloved pastor and his lovely wife sister Diane Howard 
have been with Noah's Ark Missionary Baptist Church for 26 good years. 26 good years. Down here in the country. And in the country, we could say they were rooted in the past, growing into the future. And that's what our pastor and Sister Howard has done, have done here at the Noah's Ark Missionary Baptist Church. I'm here to talk a little about a fun pack weekend for our pastor. I heard over at another church, Rock Creek, where the pastor there, Urban Kemp, said that there's a, what was it, a poor frog that do not praise his own pond. No, it's not. We're here to praise our pond and our pastor. This, I'm not saying pastor was a frog, but uh, maybe if he kissed the princess, he'll be that prince. But we're here to talk a little about our pastor, pastoral 26th anniversary. We're going to have a fun-filled weekend st beginning, beginning on March the 18th. We will be here at the Noah's Ark Missionary Baptist Church on the campus beginning at 1 p.m. to 3 we're going to uplift and share memories, fun, and games with our pastor. We're looking for all of the youth and everyone that was a part of Noah's Ark from back in the days, but especially from 1997 to the present. If Pastor Howard touched your lives, we ask that you come out and celebrate with us. We're going to have fun games out on the lawn and as you would know pastor howard is competitive but deacon abrams is more competitive so, so we're gonna see we're gonna see who come out on top on that day all right we know some love to eat we know some come out and say they hungry as a dog but on that day we're going to just have a grand time. And please come out with and bring the youth because we want to see where they've gone to from 1997. And then we're going to transition into Sunday morning worship. Sunday morning worship, we would love for everyone to come out. Don't wait till 11 o'clock like some of us to get walk into church. But get here early. So I'm talking about myself, but get here early so you can get a seat, wear your lime green and gold. Come out and look beautiful. We're going to have dinner. We're going to have a guest speaker, which will be the Oak Grove and the pastor Willie Calloway. They're going to come out and fellowship with us. And we look for a grand time. But I want to talk a minute about 26, if I have, just a quick second. I Googled 26, and it talked, and it went to a Hebrew, Hebrew uh, Yahweh. And I just looked at what Yahweh meant. That's all I wanted to know. Yahweh, for the number 26, it says, many scholars believe that the most proper meaning may be he brings into existence whatever exists. He brings into existence whatever exists. Now, I thought that was fitting for my pastor. Everything Pastor Howard think of here at the Noah's Ark Missionary Baptist Church, he presented and he bring it into existence. That's a God sent man, church. That's a God sent man. And I believe that it's fulfilled, fulfilling to celebrate our pastor, not just on this 26th anniversary, but every day. God sent our pastor to Noah's Ark. And I feel that we should continue to celebrate him 
and his lovely wife. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you on that day. Have a good one. worthy and we give you the praise Lord you're worthy and we give you the praise you're always making a way and we give you the praise Lord you're worthy and we give you the praise sing Lord Lord you're worthy and we give you and we give you the praise Lord, you, Lord, you're worthy, and we, and we give you the you're always making a way, and we give you, and we give you the praise. Lord, you're worthy, Lord, you're worthy, and we give you. Now, come on, everybody, clap your hands.
is hers. Come on, if you know that God is always making a way, if you know that God is always opening doors, if you know that God is always stepping in your situation, is there anybody here that's grateful that we serve a way maker? That no matter what the enemy tries to do, they in all things were more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Come on, I want us to sing it as a church family this morning. And sing it again. Oh, said you're always making a way. Always making a way. And we give you. And we give you the praise. You're way. always making a way. Always making a way. And we give you. And we give you the praise. You're always making a way. virtually we thank them for as well we ask that you do share that push the share button it might help amen look at the Desmond Whitehead and Alberta Blakely some other folks at the Holloway Jackson Smith all those with Taylor Avery all of watching today in service with us along with Robert Howard amen we're just grateful to God to be be here today uh, and we do celebrate but we also ask that you will continue to be in prayer for those who are in bereavement, those who are going through their grief uh, in the, the, the Kendall family, the Walker family, and all those, the Atwells and the Bradys, and add the Lane family, amen, to that, to your prayers with Miss Deanna Lane, who passed on the last week. <coughs> so, amen, just be in prayer for them. But in the midst of all that, what we call the throne, listen to the babies crying. Amen. God has a way of replenishing. Amen. And I, I just, I'm just glad to see babies and, ch and children, children in church. Amen. And I, and I, and I 
and I'm, I must be a prophet. I must be. A, I never claimed to be a prophet, but I think my prophecy came true this morning when Vanessa and Johnny walked in. I something just hit me. I said, one of these days, Vanessa's gonna walk in here with that baby. And Fallon ain't gonna be here. I, it just hit my mind. Then all of a sudden, I see Ryan drag. I'm glad y'all got him because Ryan wasn't carrying that baby right. I mean. Ryan had the baby like a book bag. I said, Grandma, Grandma, where you at? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. That's a, yeah, that, that, that's a special little fella. My main man, Bessie. Amen. He always around. People always, y'all always going to hear Bessie. What's up, Bessie? All right. Yeah. It's just good to know that all that's taking place here at our church. Amen. Train them. While they're young, they might go astray. But like you and me, he'll, they'll find their way back uh, to the church. So we thank God. We thank God for that replenishing. And we pray for those who are in grief. Amen. Let me remind you that our, our choir rehearsals are scheduled. We're trying to replenish and restore the choir. Uh, and uh, rehearsals have been planned for March 16th at 6 p.m. Uh, March 19th, right after church, March 23rd at 6 p.m. And hopefully we'll see a choir on the clock stand on the first Sunday, if y'all cooperate. Amen. If y'all cooperate with the rehearsal. You can't come if you don't go to rehearsal. Amen. But we would love for you to make the sacrifice and just get back to that place, that place of the choir. We, we have some guests with us today, and we thank God for always to have guests uh, with us. It's a, spe it's a special time for for that, and uh, I had some names. Uh, how many of y'all went to the play last night? Yesterday, somebody told me grandma. Grandma is here. Is, is Miss Deanna? 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 Am I got that right? She showed out yesterday, didn't she? And I couldn't figure. I know that wasn't grandma. The way she was. Back up and down. I know that wasn't a real grandma, because she was she, <laughs> she was doing all that stuff. But listen, thank you for coming, and congratulations to Renza for putting on an awesome production. And I'm sure I'm sure she appreciates your support. Uh, uh, Carrie and Corey Newton of uh, the San Glenish family, it's good to have, have you all with us as well sharing with us and all the any other guests that may be here today we just we love to see new people we love that we love to host you and uh, make you not a visitor but a guest amen here at our church so thank god for you let me remind you also uh, as we move into our the preaching moment and uh, uh, praise him had a song already ready they're going to do that right now but let me remind you my offering that uh, you can always give so many ways to do that. Uh, give look five, well, cash out, put it in the mail, uh, online bill pay. So many ways to give, and you guys have been doing a great job. But let's make 2023 even greater than 2022. And that is by maybe adding some more people on to, to do that. And don't forget about the $7 per week, the dollar a day for our building fund that goes to your birth month. Amen. Your birth month. In January, I, that's the first time I we, we didn't win, but uh, in January, I need us to show up. Uh, Jay, what Jay is? Jay, I need you to get them quarters, man. We, gotta, we, gotta, we can't let that happen this January. Okay, but don't forget about that. That's still a part of what we're doing. We still have obligations and things to do at our church, so your giving is uh, definitely still important to us and important to the work that goes on here in our church. What an awesome God we serve. Amen. Let's prepare now for preaching. While they're gathering themselves, you can turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 1. Amen. Philippians 1.
write the vision. Write the vision.
just what he said. He will do. He will do just what he said.
ask God to our sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ and because of my imprisonment. Most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. It's true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry but others preach about Christ with pure motives. They preach because they love me, for they know I have been appointed to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. They preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely, intending to make my chains more painful to me. But that doesn't matter whether their motives are false or genuine, the message about Christ is being preached either way. So I rejoice, and I will continue to rejoice. Amen. Amen. God's word for the people of God. If you're going to make a note, you put a note on there, if you will, just to track me in the sermon. I want to talk about squeezing good out of bad situations. Squeezing good out of bad situations. That was a bad situation back in the late uh, 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, something was discovered called a staph infection. That staph infection exists even today, and it can cause serious infections, and if it gets into your bloodstream, it can lead to something called sepsis, or death at best. The bad part about it is this, that uh, it, it, it is contagious. Seth, a staph infection is contagious. Some of the medical folk can track me with this. And, and it can be spread from one hospital to the next. It was a bad situation back then, a terrible situation that where it was wreaking havoc all over this world. But... But, 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 but realizing the bad situation, there was a fellow by the name of Alexander Fleming. Uh, he's a Scottish scientist uh, doing this bad situation. He was trying to find a solution to the staph infection. And while he was doing that, uh, he had worked on it so long, it was time to take a vacation. So before he took his vacation, he took some of the uh, bacteria that causes the infection and put it in what we learned in high school one of those little petri dishes. And he put some in petri dishes and he went on his vacation. But when he came back, what he discovered was something had happened in the petri dish uh, that whereas the staph infection didn't grow, but that was a byproduct that grew around the, uh, the, the bacteria that killed the growth of the staph infection. It was a bad situation. He was trying to figure it out. And when he, went on, when he got back from his vacation, he saw this byproduct, and that byproduct that was discovered out of that bad situation was called penicillin. Penicillin that kills the staph infection. It was a bad situation, but there was some good that came out of the bad situation. I, I, I mean, can I tell you that God, God, God can allow good to come out of bad situations? Jean Kerr says this, uh, she says, some people have such talent for making the best out of bad situations. What they do is go around creating bad situations so they can make the best of the bad situation. Some folk know how to make, make good out of bad situations. We're not all, we are not just whine because we're in that bad situation. We need to figure out a way to get some, get, squeeze some good out of it. Y'all know Paul is the writer of this. I don't have to tell you. Bible study students uh, that, that Paul writes this text and, 
and we know that he's a man of major accomplishments. But, but he's also had massive problems in his life, like many of us. Uh, Paul was arrested in Jerusalem for preaching the gospel. He, he, he was misrepresented in the courtroom, and, and then he's in prison. But as a Roman citizen, he appealed to Caesar and was transported to Rome, and y'all know the story, and he's put on a ship with other prisoners, and his problems got worse on his way to Rome. He gets shipwrecked, and he had to swim to the, to the shore. The ship got destroyed. All the prisoners swim to the shore, and he gets over there and has some more problems, with problem after problem. But with all of these problems, Paul could have very easily throw in a towel. He could have easily said, I'm sick of problems. I'm giving up on, my, on all of this stuff. I'm just going to. But, but guess what he does? He, he gets in Rome, and he, he's kept under house arrest before Caesar. He's in prison for, for life. He didn't know what was going to happen to him the next day. But, but it was during that time that Paul writes this letter called the, to the Philippian church. He writes this letter. He writes this letter while he's in chains, in prison, and in the text. He teaches us something. Paul teaches us something, and that's why I wanted to present it to the church today. I want to present it to those who are listening and watching. Uh, when opportunity knocks, there are great chances to accomplish something great. When, when great problems come, it, it creates these opportunities knocking at our door that things can happen in our lives. When a Christian has a very good opening to, to share the gospel, that's a great opportunity. Listen, Paul was a prisoner in Rome, but he saw opportunity knocking on his door in spite of his bad situation that he found himself in. Listen, no matter what we're going through, we, we need to let somebody see Jesus in us. If somebody ought to see Jesus in, in, every one of your, in every one of your problems. Paul was surrounded by the palace guard, which consisted of about 9,000 soldiers. These were the elite of the Roman army. They were future generals, but Paul was consistently chained to these folk. But this means Paul, uh, that, that Paul came into personal contact with as many as 3,000 soldiers. He either preached Jesus to them or he acted like a believer. All, all, all I'm saying to this is that as children of God, as believers, those of us of the faith, we ought not accept any situation as being out of the perfect and permissive will of our Savior. Whatever you go through is because God has allowed you to go through that for whatever purpose that he's allowed you to go through it for. Everything that happens is orchestrated by God. Listen, for the, I wanted to preach this sermon to the Noah's Ark Church family, and I'm glad we have some of you here. Guess it, because you may be in some of the same predicaments, because for the last five weeks here at our church, we have had a funeral every Saturday. And for me, it's been seven straight weeks. Every weekend, a funeral. And I'm not talking about just a funeral. I'm talking about funeral of folk that were close to us, yes. folk that meant something to us. And listen, and it has not, to be honest with you, it hadn't been a feel-good situation. No. No. But when you think about it, we've been able to squeeze some good out of all those situations. Yes. Can, I help, can I help you? We were, listen, we were able to serve people uh, we've never seen before. We were able to greet people and shake hands and, 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 and do ministry for, and waiting on them and feeding them food and preaching the word of God to them. God can be found in bad situations, but sometimes you got to squeeze the good. You got to find a way to squeeze the good. And that's why I tell, that's why I want to I wanna say it again. I probably hadn't said it in about five years. That's why I want to tell the church that whenever there's a, a homegoing celebration for somebody, it's a great opportunity for ministry. It's a great opportunity for the, for the ladies standing on the doors to, to greet people and smile at people and comfort them, give them a word of comfort. It's a great opportunity for deacons to be around, to show up at the funeral, to show up and meet the family. It's a great opportunity to do, do ministry. It's a great opportunity for the choir and the music ministry to be on top of their game because that's a great opportunity to ministry. It's a bad situation for the family, but they can get some good out of how we treat them and how we serve them, how we minister. I, ain't hear, I don't hear nobody blowing their horn, but you, we've got to get to the point where I, I just want the church to be at that point where we can pour out love during those times because it's a bad situation, but we can squeeze some good out of it. 
I, I, and I can't confirm this, but I, I, I guarantee you in many of those situations that we faced over the last five weeks, death has brought them family members together. Relationships that were broken for years have been restored. Uh, and with the right perspective, you can always squeeze good out of bad. I, I, I know of situations where the best thing that ever happened to a person was when they got arrested and went to prison. That don't sound, oh, Floyd waving this and Floyd blowing the home. I wasn't talking about Floyd, but he ain't the only one. But listen, good can come out of bad. And sometimes God works through those situations to make some, I mean, listen, there are some folk in this room, and I don't, don't blow, wave your hand because folk might hate you for a minute. They may come your hater. There are some folk who got laid off of one job, and now they're better off because they got a better job, better benefits, better pay, better, uh, closer to the house or whatever it might be. But God has a way of bringing good out of bad. There are some folk that broke up with some folk around here. But listen, the, sometimes that was the best thing that ever happened. I heard two horns blow. I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, that's what Paul is telling us, and he's screaming out to us in Philippians chapter 1. He says, I'm in a bad situation. I've been beaten. I've been shipwrecked. I, I almost got snake bit, uh, I, and now I'm in prison under 24-hour supervision by Caesar's praetorium guard. He, he screams at us. He says, I ain't bitter. I'm going to squeeze some good out of this mess. I'm going to get something out of here. He's, maybe, maybe Paul was remembering his Paul and Silas days. Y'all remember that? When, the, when, when God, when, the, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the, the, the jailer got saved because of them singing and praising the Lord at midnight. Let me just rush across the field here. Let me rush across the field because let me give, just give you something you can kind of hold on to. And that is if you're going to get good out of your bad situation, the first thing you got to understand, the first observation you have to make and the first, first uh, uh, reality that you have to accept is you have to be willing to remain true to your calling. You got to remain true to what God has assigned you here on this earth to do. Look what he says in the verse 12. And I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me, it has helped to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Now see, what, what, Paul, what Paul was doing, what he was doing was actually, he was remaining true to his calling. He was remaining true to the purpose that God had put him on, on this earth in spite of his predicament, in spite of his imprisonment. Y'all remember, if you studied the life of Paul, his whole ministry, his whole goal was to get to Rome and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And even though he didn't get there on Delta, he didn't get there on American Airlines or the Greyhound bus, way, bus line, he didn't get there that way. He didn't get there like that. God has got him to where he wanted to be. And here he is saying to us today, don't squander the opportunity to squeeze some good out of your bad situation. Uh, it had to be tough on, it had to be tough on Paul. It had to be difficult and uncomfortable for Paul to be in a Roman jail, watch this, telling those 3,000 soldiers about a king that was greater than Caesar. Here he is trying to tell them that I know another man by the name of Jesus that, that Caesar can't touch. It had to be tough on him. It had to be a difficult, but he, had, he remained true to his, to his calling and his purpose. He had, listen, and it wasn't easy. He had to stretch and squeeze himself and stay on course with his calling. All I'm trying to tell somebody, if you're going to squeeze some good out of your bad situation, don't let your bad situation knock you out of what God has put you on earth here to do. I'm talking about four other people. You cannot allow God, listen, the worst, I, I've had a whole lot of reasons to walk away from this microphone. I've had a whole lot of reasons to walk away from this church. I've had a whole lot of reasons to, to tear up my preaching certificate. But if I do that, I'm not pleasing God. I might please my flesh. I'm, 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 I'm not talking to nobody in this room. I'm talking to some folk maybe on, on Facebook who, who done walked away. I'm talking to folk who have walked. I know ain't none of y'all walked away, but, but, but maybe it's a warning that, that don't allow sickness, don't allow 
breakups. Don't allow stuff in your life. Don't allow be, not having money. Don't allow all this stuff to pull you away from what God has called you to do. And listen, well, let, me, let me, can I cut across the field? And don't let no aggravating folk. Because that's what Paul had. I, I done jumped in my next little point. Off, but I, I didn't mean to go there, but I saw some faces I need to talk. You need to not let people pull you out of what God has called you to do. Uh-huh. Uh, you got to remain true to your call. And then as I rush across the field here, you, uh, you, you got to not only remain true to your call, listen, you got to remember not to be bitter, but be better. <laughs> listen, when you want, you want to make the devil mad, you stay on what you're supposed to be doing. You keep doing what God has called, has called you to do. Uh, in spite of what they, what they have done to you, in spite of how they put your name up on some billboard somewhere, in spite of how they've talked about you on social media, in spite of how they have scandalized your name, you want to make them mad. You, get, you, you be better and don't be bitter. Because when, when the devil can get you bitter, that means you can't function like God wants you to function in what he has called you to do. You can tell the devil, the devil is a liar. I will do what God has called me. If anybody's going to get upset, it's going to be the enemy that's trying to mess with me. It's going to be the folk that, very, very folk that talked about me. Look what Paul says. Not only that, he said, but most of those followers of Jesus have become far more sure of themselves in the faith than ever before. He says, it's true that some have preached Christ because, uh, because they know me and they wanted to be with me. He said, but there are some other folk. He said, there are other folk. That's preaching out of greed. They, 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 they see me in chains. They see me in trouble. They see me with a bowed down head. But, but they see that and they're trying to take advantage of the situation. He said, now that I, he said, they think that I'm out of the picture and, and, and they are merely greedy, hoping to get something out of it. Not for the Lord, not for God, but they're trying to get it for themselves. Bad motives. Bad motives. You got, to, you, got to, you got to come in here and remember you, you can't be bitter uh, when you are in a bad situation. You will never get anything good out of that situation uh, as far as the Lord is concerned. Because, but when you stay on your purpose, when you stay on your purpose, you got to, you got to remind the enemy that, 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 that listen, you, you, you really don't know who I am. Because I'm not doing what I want to do. I'm doing what God called me to do. And Paul, Paul, Paul can say, I, my preaching has influenced so many others to preach the gospel. He says, some did it out of sincerity. Some was hoping the gospel preaching would make them uh, richer, make them famous, or make, them, or make it harder on Paul. But listen, what Paul is saying, listen, there are some folk that do stuff that are messy in ministry to try to make it harder on leadership. I ain't being messy. Real people who does not want the ministry to succeed, so they be messy doing what's good, but out with a bad motive. <laughs> Let me rush. Remain true to your calling in your bad situation. Remember not to be bitter, but be better at what God has called you to do. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm gone because I'm right here on verse 18 now. But that doesn't matter, Paul says. Whether their motives are false or genuine, the message about Jesus is being preached. And here's what he said. He said, so I shout. I praise. I mean, I'm not making it up. It's right he said, so I rejoice. I rejoice. Uh, and, and that's my last little message to you. Not only do you remain, remember, you ought to learn how to rejoice because God, in the final analysis, God will get the glory. God will get, so, I mean, God, Paul could have very easily gotten upset by the wrong motives of the people, but, but he didn't get upset. He simply rejoiced that the gospel was being preached. Oh, uh, he said, and, and we should have that same joy as long as the gospel, as long as, as Jesus is being, uh, continued to be enthroned, 
uh, we ought to still have that same joy when we know that, that, that the church is moving on, ministry is moving on in spite of those who are trying to block the progress. We ought to celebrate the fact we ought to have joy in the midst of it all because the Bible says anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. And it's not God's desire that any should perish. So it doesn't matter who's preaching the gospel. Doesn't matter who's teaching the Sunday school lesson. Doesn't matter who has the Zoom hookup for Bible study. As long as Jesus is being preached, you ought to continue to have your joy and not let folk knock you off of your ministry. And that's why, that's why James said, my brothers and my sisters, you ought to count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith, it'll work a little patience in your life. So what he's trying to tell us is you ought to keep your joy if you don't keep nothing else. If you don't need, don't lose, don't lose your faith. Don't lose, don't lose your spirit. Don't lose those things that God has assigned you to do. But the main thing you ought not ever lose is that joy of the Lord. You ought to maintain that place because having joy doesn't mean we'll never have a problem in our lives. Having joy doesn't mean that everything is going to be in our favor. It doesn't mean that we won't have to cry some midnight tears. But the fact of the matter is, even when we're in unfavorable situations and we're hanging around unpredictable people, we can say, I still got my joy. I can preach when I'm in a dark place and get God can still get glory. You can do ministry even when you are in a dark place and God will still get glory. That's why sometimes we have to, those problems will cause us to weep, cause us to have a few heartaches in our lives. But having joy does not certify that we will always have money in our pockets. But one thing it does promise us that we've got somebody that's walking with us, that's talking with us. And every now and again, he'll remind us that we are his children. I like what Paul was doing in that jail. I like what he was doing while he was chained up uh, 24 hours a day. Paul says, I got something that they don't understand. I have a blessed assurance. I can know who my Jesus is. My joy does not come because of my predicament or my problem. Paul says, I got the assurance that God knows for me and that he knows that there will be no weapon as many of them that are pointed my way none of those weapons will conquer me because I'm more than a conqueror because I love the Lord his joy came from having a Christ centered life and I come to tell somebody who's in a bad situation you ought to learn how to smile sometime you ought to learn how to laugh sometime you ought to learn how to show the devil that he doesn't have stolen your joy. He might have stole your money, might have stole your job, he might have stole your home, foreclosed on the car and the house. But when it's all said and done, you ought to understand for yourself that I still got my joy. I've been through a whole lot in the last two months, and I don't know what the rest of the year is going to bring. But I can tell you, they can take everything away from me. The devil, the, 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 the death can take away my, my members. Death can take away my friends. He can rob me of my money. He can put my children in jail. But one of those things, one of these days, I'm going to tell somebody after I've come out of the storm that I still got joy. I still got my joy. When the devil tried to steal it, I still got joy. And I ain't the only one. There's about six more people sitting somewhere around you. They should have been dead. They should have been locked in a crazy house. 
but the Lord spared their lives. They learned how to squeeze and get joy out of a bad situation. There's somebody here today, I will tell you right now, that we love the joy. It's the joy of the Lord that he is my strength. And when I'm surrounded by the enemy, I understand that they cannot have my joy. The flesh worm might eat my body. The grave might hold my, my flesh. But when it's all said and done, I'm going to still have my joy. Because when I leave this world, I'm going to celebrate. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. My joy is not a temporary joy. My joy is not a poor pit joy. My joy is not a microphone joy, but my joy is in my soul because I know that I still got my joy. And when I get to heaven and when I see Jesus, I'm going to tell him thank you for keeping my joy alive. I'm going to remind him that I had some dark days, but I want to thank you, Jesus. I can't wait to see his face. So I can tell him that I love him for what he did for me. And somebody said, how did he do it? Y'all already know that he went up on a cross, died on that cross, buried in a tomb, stayed in the tomb all night Friday night. And death thought he had him, stayed in the tomb all day Saturday. And death thought he had him. But thank God, the grave does not have a victory. Because I found out when I read my Bible, Brother Cooper, I found out that it was early one Sunday morning that he got up with my joy. He got up with my joy on his shoulder, my joy in his hands. And that's why I have to praise him. That's why I have to tell him thank you. That's why I have to say, Lord, I bless your name. I bless your name. Lord, you are the light of my life. I say, you are who I need you to be. I'm going to squeeze myself in a bad situation until some good come out of it. Is there anybody here that say, I came out and I still got my joy. I came out and I can still praise God. I came out of that thing. The doctor gave me a bad report, but I came out of that thing. That's why I praise him. That's why I give him glory. That's why I said, thank you, God. Because through many dangers, toils and snares, I've already come. But y'all know what it was. It was grace, God's grace. It was grace that brought me out. I still, I say I still got my joy. I say I still got my joy. I can tell death, you hadn't got my joy. You made me cry a little while, but you didn't get my joy. I feel a little sorrowful on the inside, but I still got my joy. And I'm gonna serve him in spite of I'm going to serve him in spite of unfavorable conditions and unfaithful people I'm going to still serve him don't let him steal your joy that's what Paul says I'm going to you know Paul says I'm going to just do me you do you. Paul says, I'm going to do me. I'm going to do what I was called to do. And that's the message today. Listen, there's some joy stealers out there. There's some things that will try to rip you, take your joy away from you. Don't let him have it. Keep your joy. Doesn't matter what the doctor said. If he said, take a pill, take a pill, and, and shout to God that somebody made the pill. <laughs> I'm done. All of 
the ground is seeking sand all other ground is seeking sand my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand All of the ground is sinking sand All of the ground is sinking sand the invitation while we're here in this space Somebody who may not have Christ in your life, don't have a church home. You can come today and receive him as your Lord and your Savior. We offer him to you right now. We offer Christ to you, oh my brother. We he offer Christ to you, oh my sister. He will give, he will give you brand new life, new life abundantly. So, so come. Come on to, to Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As we prepare now for our Lord's Supper, we, we come to break bread together as believers. Uh, Jesus himself instituted the Lord's Supper that upper room one day uh, after the Bible says after they had had supper something happened he, after one had dismissed himself uh, he reminded them that the broken bread and the fruit of the vine was to remind us and them of what was about to take place in his life. The suffering, the crucifixion, the shed blood. And he took, after he broke the bread and blessed it and poured the fruit of the vine and blessed it, he reminded them, he says, often as you do this, what you're going to do is show forth the remembrance of what I had to go through the suffering. And he said, but the good news is, I did it just for you. And for those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ in our lives, we know that he did it just for us. We have no power of our own, but if Jesus blessed those substances back then, him being God, us being wretches undone, we all do the same thing. God, we thank you now for the privilege. We thank you, God, for the opportunity. Even as we remember a bad situation, we come now, God, because you were able to squeeze out some good and allow your son Jesus to suffer on our behalf. And now we come for these next few minutes just to remember what he's did uh, for the remission of our sins. Thank you, God. Now, God, bless these substances who man has made and manufactured 
we pray now, God, you, that you would give it spiritual value, that every partaker would remember that you, your son Jesus did it just for them. Bless it, and God, keep it in that spiritual space, God, that we will know that he, he hung, bled, and died for all of our sins, so therefore we can bring bread to them. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone should already have their substances. If you do not have your substances, that you raise your hand. Just hold your hand up if you do not have. If you do not have your substances. Amen. Let us all stand as we prepare to go home. The Bible said they sing a hymn, but I think we ought to just go out with a little joy today. Amen. Amen. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy that I have, you know the world, the world didn't give it to me.